Okay, welcome to Arrow 206 Project 2 Part 4. This is the video for uh, Lesson 6. And today we're going to wrap up um, all of Project 2 and um, show you what you need to do in order to be able to turn it in by uh, 0730 on the next lesson. Okay, so here's what we need to do in, uh, in Project 4. We need to um, update the driver code to create uh, figure two in the handout here and the figure two the difference between figure one and figure two this figure one is four independent uh, figures and figure two is uh, one figure that has four sub figures uh, and now um, that's called the tiled layout in MATLAB and that's what we're going to do is we're going to use the tiled layout to create that figure with um, sub figures okay uh, so the uh, tiled layout uh, command, if we want to um, find out more about it, we can always pull up the documentation for tiled layout and uh, read all about it. But basically we're going to use the uh, tiled layout command. So I'm going to uh, rerun my code here to make sure I've got some results to plot. Okay, I've got some results to plot. And I'm going to... Um, I don't need all this uh, figure two stuff right now. We're just going to have one figure with a tiled layout. So underneath figure one here, I'm going to type in tiled layout and press tab to complete that. And I want to tell it what kind of layout I want. And I want a two by two layout um, of these uh, sub figures. And then I need to type in uh, next tile. And that's going to initialize the tiled layout system. And let me create my first tile um, with these. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need that anymore with these uh, pressures on it. So I press control enter here. I get this uh, tile layout and in the top left uh, quadrant I've created the first um, tile. Okay. And now if I come down here I'm going to uh, uncomment this code. I'm going to get rid of the save as thing because I don't need that. I don't need this figure 2 call anymore because I'm still working in figure 1 and now I'm just working on the next tile. I'm going to press hold on and then I'm going to plot the temperature and the reference temperature in here. And I'm going to press Control Enter with that and see what I get. And I'm probably throwing an error message around here, and that's because I misspelled next tile. And press Control Enter again, and there's the next tile. Okay. Um, and I can keep doing that for the other uh, two tiles that I need in the handout. And the other two tiles are density and speed of sound. So I'll let you uh, add those two tiles. The tile laid out is a really robust um, way to uh, create subfigures in one figure. Um, and to be able to save them all, I really recommend reading the documentation. It's really flexible and really powerful. Okay. Um, the other thing we need to think about is the legend on this because now that they're all in uh, one figure you know we don't really need to repeat the lesson the legend four times and it doesn't really fit on some of these smaller plots anyway so we'll just leave the legend on the one that makes the most sense I haven't plotted the other two yet but right now looking at pressure the legend fits fine on pressure as long as I'm using the same line styles on the other plots, then I won't run into a problem by doing this. So I'm just going to comment out the legend on the second tile, rerun the figure, and because I'm using the clear figure command, it cleared it, it replotted it, and now it's all looking uh, it's all looking great. Okay. And so you need to save that as vector graphics and um, insert it in your final report. You need to create a second set of graphs uh, for the English data. Okay. Uh, for uh, grins, we're going to compare the execution time of our code to um, Atmos ISA. And the way that we do that is with the uh, tick and the talk command. Okay, so how TikTok works is it lets you uh, time your code to get a sense for how efficiently you're coding. And you put a tick before and a talk after. And I'm going to comment out the call to ISA here. And I'm just going to run it like this. And it took uh, 0.005 seconds to run uh, my function with this 1,000 altitudes. Now I'm going to comment out my function call and bring in Atmos ISA and press Control Enter again. And Atmos ISA took 
uh, 0.15, uh, 0 0.015 seconds, okay, as opposed to 0 0.004 seconds. So, you know, three to four times longer for the built-in uh, MOS ISA. Uh, you're probably thinking, you know, both of them are really fast. Why does it even matter? Well, when you start getting into um, dealing with a lot more data, like uh, here's a thousand altitudes, okay, and my function here is actually taking about uh, almost three seconds to run with this thousand altitudes as compared to um, Atmos, a million altitudes as compared to Atmos ISA, which is uh, before it took three to four times as long to run, so now I'm running three seconds. So um, it took two to three times as long, uh, it took seven seconds. Okay, so that's a significant amount of time to run. So the project is asking you to uh, compare the execution times. And then also there's this uh, optional objective down here in the project uh, to accelerate your code uh, by replacing the um, if else statements with uh, you know, logical in indexing and vectorized code. Okay, and this is really where the advantage of MATLAB comes into play because logical indexing and vectorizing code can make it significantly faster. Okay, so what does all that mean? I've got some examples for you here in my sample code. So uh, here's an example of vectorizing code. So, you know, vectorizing is just as simple as passing a vector into a function. So I can pass a scalar value into the cosine function, um, or I can create a uh, vector of numbers here, a. So here's my vector a, and I can pass in a whole vector to the cosine function, and it'll give me a result that's also a vector. Um, where uh, every um, every value in the answer array corresponds to the cosine of the value in the input array. Okay, so that's uh, vectorization in a nutshell. And I gave you some examples to run through here. And um, if I create uh, two vectors, now there's a difference here between array operations and matrix operations. So if I try to do C equals A times B, it's going to throw... Uh, an error because I'm using, it, it assumes when I use the multiplication operator that I'm asking for matrix multiplication, but I can't multiply these two matrices uh, together like that because they're not compatible in size. But instead, what I really wanted to do was multiply these two matrices element by element, and in order to do that, I need to use an array operation, and I um, can obtain an array operation by putting a period in front of the um, operator to indicate array operations instead of matrix operations. So now I can execute this line here. And uh, sure enough, so uh, element by element, 0 times 10 is 0, 2 times 8 is 16, 4 times 6 is 24. Okay, so that's what the array operator is doing. Um, so vectorizing code is much faster. It's faster to pass in a whole vector of numbers to cosine than to loop over a vector and then pass in each scalar value, value individually. And it's faster to use array operations uh, when possible by putting a period in front of the um, operator to do element by element um, math instead of matrix math. So here's the other array operators that uh, you'll need to use uh, when you're uh, doing array operations instead of matrix operations. And to read more about these, I highly you know, recommend typing in, running, running these two lines of code and reading more about it, okay? The second thing that we can do to really speed up our code is use logical indexing. So let's say that I've got a vector A here from one to 20. Logical indexing is going to create a logical vector corresponding to whatever condition I specify. So if I'm looking for values of a less than 10, I'll run this. And now I've got a logical array out of here where I've got ones and zeros, true and false, where the first nine values of the array are true because those are the first, uh, those are the values that are less than 10. Okay? And I can actually save that logical array as a result. I'm going to call it R uh, for range. Uh, in terms of range of indices that I want to operate on. And now I can actually use that range of indices R, which is the logical array, pass it in to the array A and then do math on that and save the result. So if I, if I just execute this, okay, um, I'll see that I took 
the first nine values, numbers one through nine, and I divided them by 10. And I didn't uh, do that to the rest of the array. I only did it to the values corresponding to the condition that I specified. So that's where it's really powerful because then I can store this result um, also using the R command. And um, I'll do that uh, now. So now I've got this B value with columns one through nine. But now let's say that I was looking for um, values uh, greater than 10. Okay, so just right here, I'm going to say, well, let's just say greater than 15. So now this is my range, greater than 15. Here's my logical array. I've got true values in columns 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And now I'm going to divide it by 100. Okay, so now I've got this new array B, and you'll notice there's a bunch of zeros in the middle of the array because... Um, I didn't assign any values to them. The first operation assigned values to the first nine indices. The second operation assigned them to the last five indices, and I didn't do anything to the middle ones. Okay. Um, so, and uh, sure enough, these are all divided by 100. Okay. So, super powerful way of finding numbers in an array that you want to operate on and then doing those operations in in vector operations all, all at one time and we can also specify two conditions and and you're going to need to do this if you want to try to speed up your code and do this optional portion uh, so i can say r equals uh, less than 10 and greater than 2 and when i do that i'm just going to get a logical array with the values that match those or um, less than 10 and greater than 16, in which case I got a bunch of zeros in here because I have falses inside the middle of this range of number numbers. Okay, so you can do all that, um, you know, with the altitude bands in your code, and then do uh, vector operations on these logical ranges and significantly speed up the uh, code for Project Two. Okay, and. Uh, for a demonstration of that, I've got um, mine over here, and I'm going to pull up my uh, MATLAB command window here. I'm going to run my code. I'm running. No, you can't see it right now. I'm going to run a million altitudes. Uh, the first TikTok is going to be for my original function. The second one's for my fast function, and the third one is for the ISA function. Okay. So there's my original function. Here's my vectorize function with logical indexing. Less than a tenth of a second. There's the output. Don't pay attention to that. I've, I've got all three things here. My original atmos, my fast one, and ISA. Uh, but you can see with um, logical indexing and vector operations, I did a million altitudes in less than a tenth of a second. So give it a try. Um, see if you can beat my time here for a million altitudes. That would be awesome if you could, and I'd love to hear about it. Okay. Anyway, uh, the last thing that we need to do here, the last couple things we need to do for the project is we need to, um, I want you to calculate percent differences between your results and Atmos ISA at each altitude. And then I want you to output your data um, to a spreadsheet. Okay. And um, I'm giving you uh, two different ways to do that here. One of them is with a cell array, and one of them is with a, a table, which is a separate structure um, uh, data type in MATLAB. And we can also actually just use the fprintf command um, in MATLAB to create a CSV file, and then we could open that CSV file in um, Excel. Because fprintf has the ability to write to a file ID, and we could write it, we could put in commas in there, uh, in between the numbers, we could format all the numbers, and we could put that to a CSV file. It's kind of a lot of work. It still comes in handy in certain situations, but really it's just a lot easier to use a cell array or a table um, to, uh, to output this to a spreadsheet. So a table is uh, really the most... Um, most appropriate for uploading to uh, a spreadsheet. Uh, so, you know, we can collect a bunch of different data inside a table, and then we can just use the write table command to write it directly to a spreadsheet. So I really recommend getting familiar with these two methods because they're going to come in handy in your future Arrow classes, okay? And, uh, of course, as usual, I've got some sample code for these in my sample code that I provide. 
Uh, so I'll just talk about what's going on here a little bit. I'll let you go ahead and do it. Okay, so the first way we're doing this is by creating a cell array. That's what these curly brackets are. And uh, we can, in a cell array, we can mix um, strings and numerical values in the cells of the array. So this first row of the cell array is a vector with a string for altitude in units, pressure in units, uh, reference pressure in units, and you would need to add other stuff in here, and it needs to be in strings. So you do a space, uh, and then temperature. Um, or actually, what I asked was for a percent difference, so the next thing that would come would be p diff uh, for a percent difference, okay? Uh, so that's going to be the header in the cell array and then I'm going to loop over the length of my altitudes and now this is the first row in my array one so now I'm going to go into row two and I'm going to jump straight to row two by doing I plus one because I, my I is starting at one because I need to go over the whole length of H's uh, but I'm going to increment plus one to everyone because I know I've got something in my header row, row one there and then I'm going to, you know, create a, a cell, um, a one-dimensional array here where I call out the numeric values and put them in each place in the cell. And then I can just use the write cell command to write the results to a spreadsheet. Okay. The other way I can do it is using a table, and a table is a lot more robust. Um, and I encourage you to read the documentation and uh, tables come with headers. So we'll create a table uh, using the table command and we're going to create columns. So I'm transposing all of my output here. H's I'm going to transpose, P I'm going to transpose, P ref I'm going to transpose, and then you would need to add in you know, P diff and you need to make sure it's a column vector. In my case I know these are row vectors so I have to transpose them here to get column vectors. So you need to add in all the column vectors for everything you want to output to your spreadsheet. We have to go through a couple steps here to rename the variables in uh, like the header in the table and you know I just pulled this from the documentation so I'm going to grab the old names in the table variable and then I'm going to set the new names and I you know know how many there need to be just because of I created the table so you know this looks like the cell array up top where I set text including units for all of the variables in the array and then I'm going to use the rename uh, vars command I'm going to send it to table, send it the old names, send it the new names and then I get a results here uh, uh, results to here where I have all the correct uh, variables and I can just write that table to a spreadsheet. Okay, so um, this is uh, so pick one of these two methods to output your data to a spreadsheet and I will keep this handy. Okay, so I'm going to uh, open this outside of MATLAB in Excel. So right click open outside of MATLAB and um, here's my pressure, my reference pressure, temperature, reference temperature, and you need to have. Um, uh, other columns in here that show percent difference, so I should see another column in here that says percent difference for pressure, percent difference for temperature, and for density. Okay, so uh, once you do that, um, you've uh, recorded your output for me, and uh, don't give me a spreadsheet with a uh, million lines in it. A um, thousand steps is plenty uh, for the spreadsheet, uh, or you could even do less than that. Uh, just to keep it brief, make sure you hit every altitude band. Okay, and then I want you to send me all your results. I need the two figures, uh, one in SI units, one in English units. Uh, discussion, a uh, little short discussion, comparing your results to Atmos ISA and the execution time and your code um, as dependencies or, you know, uh, use the publishing feature and attach the PDF to your PDF and upload that to the assignment teams. All right, I'll see you in class.